Um, I think I tend to make games that are about um, gameplay. Usually I'm more interested in accessible gameplay, so making something that, that I enjoy and that I think is fun, but that uh, you know, my mom can play or uh, my even you know, grandma might be able to pick up and at least interact with and understand what's going on. That's usually really important to me. So the goal of Cannibalt was um, on an emotional or, or almost tactile level was to make something that was very pure and, uh, and very much an action game and a kind of a difficult action game, the kind of game that I like to play, but to um, rip out all the things that maybe are a, are a barrier of entry to people who don't usually play action games. So there's only one button, there's only a jump button, you always run to the right, um, so there's a very um, limited set of things that you have to learn to understand how to succeed in the game. Uh, the obstacles are very clear and obvious. There are rooftops and gaps between rooftops. So you either land on a rooftop or you fall and die. And it's a very simple system to learn. And I think that makes a big difference. But then I sort of use that as an excuse to steep it in all of the sort of geeky sci-fi imported action French parkour stuff that uh, that I love and that I want to expose people to and that I want to share you know, my enthusiasm for. But the, the emotion or feeling is just supposed to be uh, that um, middle of action movie action scene but extended and interactive. I think that really sums up the game. Like that's as deep as the game gets in a lot of ways is you are a guy jumping through windows and that's pretty awesome. So most of my games, I think sound is kind of a big deal. We actually got into, not an argument exactly, but a, a fairly serious discussion about can you have a lo-fi, chunky, pixelated retro aesthetic and you know, give it a, a movie soundtrack treatment. And I really wanted to because that was, that was again, that was, there was no uh, choice to do really hi-fi art. Um, it was a five-day game. Most of it was made in a weekend. So I was like, okay, this is what we have for art. Can we use sound to lie about how awesome the rest of this world is? And we totally could. I did all the sound effects um, myself, and there was a few that were downloaded and re-engineered, like explosions or windows breaking are really not cheap for me to fully or safe, probably. Um, so some of that was re-engineered, you know, you'd get you get a freezer coil and play the sound backwards and then stretch it out and then it sounds like a weird alien spaceship. You know, the footsteps and the tumbling and the birds taking off and running on the crane, like those are all things that uh, I recorded at home on the couch or in the studio. You know, I, I get to cheat a lot I and mean, you guys always on the left side of the screen so I can pan all the sound a little bit to the left and I think it just made the biggest difference in the world. It's a thing which is very, it's a very abstract, symbolic visual representation. There's very little about it that's realistic but um, the realistic soundscape um, takes you the rest of the way without even trying and it's not something that you need to you don't need an appreciation for nostalgic video game art you don't need years of familiarity to understand that like wow this sounds neat you know it's it's that shortcut to uh, shortcut to imagination